Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be covering a Bullet Bourbon. Now, I haven't covered Bullet for well over two years, and that was uh, roughly December 2016. One of my early videos, number 19, if memory serves. So I'll pop a link up there if you want to see some really bad audio, some really bad camera presence, even worse than you're watching right now. This one, however, is the 10 year version. I'm really looking forward to covering this because there was a bit of a stir when that released over in the UK. It was relatively hard to get. Um, I haven't actually seen it in a shop yet, but it's easy to get on the internet in the UK. Now, fortunately, we can ship stuff like that around the UK without any problems whatsoever. Even Amazon do next day delivery. But this thing's on Master of Malt now for £41 at time of recording, which I think is a little bit of a steal. Very, very cheap. But let's crack on with a little bit of knowledge about Bullet itself, because if you haven't checked out my first video, or if it's Bullet's new to you, it's kind of interesting. So it's now a Diageo brand. Now this stuff we're drinking today would have been made at the Four Roses distillery for Diageo. Now they've actually got their own distillery now, opened in 2017. This is in Shelbyville, Kentucky. And they make, will be making the Bullet brand. The stuff we've got today, made at Four Roses, they make the Bullet standard, and the Bullet 10, same mash bill. I've seen varying degrees of what the actual mash bill is, but it's a high rye, so we're talking about 28% rye. The rest is about allegedly 68% corn, then 4% malted barley. This is exactly the same stuff. The rye, however, is made at the MGP plant in Indiana. I believe they're gonna be transferring that over to their own distillery, but I don't know that for a fact, so we'll see about that when it actually gets released. This thing is at 45.6% and it's a courtesy sample from my pal Gus, who's a part of the British Bourbon Society, hence the British Bourbon Society glass I'm drinking out of today. If you don't know who they are and you're from the UK, do, do check them out on Facebook, excellent group. But Gus gives me pretty much all of my decent bourbon um, samples, so uh, cheers dude for that and I'm looking forward to trying this. The standard release is at 45% in the UK. It used to be 40, bumped it up to 45, like that. That's uh, not often you see Diageo looking for stuff like that, but good to see this uh, has retained itself to kind of 45.6 for us. Very, very, very available in the US. And I implore you, if you're in the UK, I think you can also get it in Germany and Australia maybe. If, uh, if you're into those uh, sort of areas, then do check this out. Do check this out. Let's crack on with the nose on this and see what we've got, shall we? Mm, now for me, I'm getting into my bourbons, you know, when when uh, episode 19 came out, I really didn't have a clue about bourbons, but that's two years later now. I've been kind of getting into them a lot. This is a very, very kind of typical bourbon -y nose to me. It's lots of caramel, lots of vanilla, lots of oak. You know, this has been in a, a barrel for at least 10 years, perhaps a little, even a little bit more. In Kentucky, excellent kind of temperature fluctuations going on. But the high rye in this, as we said, about 27, 28%. Gives it a kind of spicy edge to it. And for me as well, I get, uh, I get cherries and dark fruits on this. But I couldn't tell you exactly where that comes from. I'm sure somebody in the comments below will let me know where kind of dark fruits comes from in bourbon. Let's try on the palate. Mmm. Immediately, huge spices on the tongue. Very, very spice forward. I would wager that's the rye. Those that know the channel know that um, I'm not overly fond of rye and it's something I'm gonna try and break into this year. I've got a lot of rye to cover. So these are kind of my, these are kind of my bridgeway to those, you know, the high rye bourbons that I like. I prefer wheated bourbons, I will admit, but I really do like a corned bourbon. But um, this is a kind of excellent bridgeway to that though, so that kind of high rye, Instead of doing a 51% rye, 28% kind of edging in there. But yeah, as I said, this is very, very, very spice forward. But it's kind of a, a carbon copy of the nose, you know. So it's there's no surprises in there. You're kind of getting, you're getting the oak, you're getting the caramel, you're getting the vanillas, you're getting that spice, and more of those cherries. I think might be a bit of a weird one for me, but you have to let me know if you think you get cherries and stuff like this. I sometimes get marzipan on bourbons as well. I'm not a big fan of marzipan, but I do like that nose on there. Mm. Now in terms of finish, it's kind of, it's got a tail off. It's about medium, I would say. So it's kind of like that and then it just, it kind of drops off a little bit and disappears into the ether. 
but when that spiciness disappears, you're left with those really nice, calm vanilla notes that you're kind of used to with your bourbon. So it's it's a really nice, really nice casual drink, I think, you know, apart from the kind of really high spicy bits of it, but it's, for me, I think it's quite casual. Now here's the interesting thing about this whiskey. Now I said the price earlier on. In the UK, you can probably get this cheaper in America because we pay a little bit more on the taxes, but very, very often you can get the standard bullet for £22. This is the same mash bill. The standard bullet is usually aged between sort of five and eight years, but it's roughly six years in age. So this is really only four years older. The rye comes in at a little bit more expensive in the UK, maybe about £30. You can get it for cheaper, usually about 25 This sells for 41 So it's getting on for double the price of the standard bullet. But £41 is not a lot of money for a good quality whiskey. And I think this is that. You know, especially if you've been into bourbons for a little bit of time now, and if you've tried stuff like the standard bullet, and you're just looking for something a little bit more premium, but isn't gonna break the bank. This is the kind of thing you'd be looking for, I think. You know, like, if you're looking at other things that are like bourbons aged 10 years and above, they tend to be quite pricey. Now, again, correct me if I'm wrong if you see this in the comments below, but I understood from a documentary I saw a while ago that if uh, a bourbon is kept in a barrel for longer than sort of nine years, then there's some levies attached to that, so it costs a little bit more money for the distillery to keep those barrels. Again, please do let me know if I'm wrong on that. That's just something I thought, I'm sure I saw in a documentary once, but... So to see things that are 10 years and above gets quite expensive, and then with the export tax and our duties and things like that, that's starting to get quite expensive in the UK to see things that are very, very heavily aged. The point I'm making in a roundabout way is that for a 10-year-old bourbon, this is kind of cheaper than most things you'll see at 10 years. You know, usually about 50 quid plus, so you're saving a good tenner. Mm. And for my money, bang on. Now, again, thanks for Gus for the sample of this, but easily I would have bought a bottle of this to review, and I think I probably will. At some point in the future, you might see me re-review this when I actually do get a bottle, because one of the things I found with the original bullet was I didn't like it to start with, and as I went down, I liked it and liked it more and more and more may well have been the rye content because I'm again not the biggest fan of rye and I'm kind of breaching into that now but I've liked this immediately right from the off I'm not sure where it was in the bottle when Gus poured this out but never mind I'll be buying a bottle of it and I think you should too is made at the MG Ple blah 